Welcome to my presentation on the mass production and formulation of entomopathogenic nematodes for the control of important insect pests. My name is Murray Dunn and the supervisor for my PhD project is Professor Anthony Panlan from Stellenbosch University in the Department of Conservation Ecology and Entomology. What exactly are entomopathogenic nematodes? Entomopathogenic nematodes, also known as EPNs, are microscopic roundworms that are pathogenic to many insect pests and can be used as a biological control agent or biopesticide in an IPN strategy. The global biopesticide market is growing rapidly due to the increased regulation of chemical pesticides and the huge demand for environmentally friendly products. EPNs are one of many products that can be used to alleviate heavy chemical pesticide use. But how do EPNs work? Well, they penetrate the larvae of the insect and reproduce within the insects until the food sources are depleted where they then emerge to seek a new host. This is called in vivo, as it uses a live organism. In our labs, for mass culture purposes, the insect is replaced by a suitable, suitable medium and a uh, glass flask, such as an Erlenmeyer flask, that mimics the insect host. This is known as artificial mass production or in vitro liquid culturing. This process can be upscaled to a bioreactor such as seen in the picture here and to bigger bioreactors at an industrial level which can then be formulated into a marketable product. The mass production of EPNs is an advanced biotechnological process. In my masters I showed proof of concept for mass culturing the species Steinonema jeffrehensa in shake flasks as well as in bioreactors. My PhD work will build on from that work. The goal for mass production is to obtain a high yield in a very short production time. Currently, our production time lasts approximately two weeks or 14 days. The most difficult task of mass production is the scale up process from flask to bioreactor. And new variables such as shear force damage must be considered. This table shows work done around the world on EPN flask production. In the third column, under yield, yield refers to the number of infective juveniles or IJs per mill which can be formulated into a product and is highly dependent on the size of the EPN IJ. In the third row, you can see Heteropetus indica, after 70 days of culture, achieved a yield of 648,000. This is a very small EPN, so those numbers are expected, but even then, that is extremely high for a yield. In the bottom rows for Yechela Mensa and Jeffrey Hensa, one of our doctoral students that used to work in our lab, Tieran, Tieran Ferreira, cultured Steinonema Yechela Mensa and achieved a yield of 75,000. Compare this to Adesetel in 2016, who achieved 281,000. For my master's work, we published a chapter where we achieved a yield of 154,000. This is quite a large nematode, so that is a good More recently, we have begun the optimization for the culture of Steinonema yechla mensa, and with slight changes here and there, we have managed to increase our yields to 300,000 as an average. This indicates the continual need for optimization of the process. This table shows EPN bioreactor production globally. The much lower yield is indicative of the difficulty of upscaling the process from flask to bioreactor. In the second column, Different types of bioreactors can be seen. The most common bioreactors used are airlift bioreactors and stir tank bioreactors. This table shows every bioreactor trial we have conducted in our labs. And you can see how we have begun to increase our yields with constant optimization, beginning with 5,000 IJs per mole, where we have now increased to 84,000 per mole for Jeffrey Hensa. And previously, Yechelemensa, we could barely culture it in the bioreactor, whereas now we are getting consistent results of between 80,000 to 120,000, but still requires a lot of optimization. For my PhD, I hope to be culturing EPNs in 100 to 1,000 litre bioreactors to assist in the commercialization of this product. And lastly, I would just like to thank the following organizations for funding my PhD project and making this all possible. Thank you.